Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm from uh, Tsinghua University. I'm many researching on the architectural history. And uh, on top of my agenda, I'm many uh, interested in the ancient uh, Chinese uh, architecture. And we are astonished by the ancient uh, carpentry work and the techniques. And uh, we want to know how they designed it. For this one, they it explained how they made this uh, structure. And it also involved the Asian science and Asian Chinese computer work. It is a small case study for you and uh, interior structure. For the Asian uh, wooden structure, it involves a lot of uh, science uh, and also the geometry. So just like this uh, uh, ball, it has different uh, layers. Uh, and uh, for each layer, it can rotate. So we think that uh, for this kind of uh, ivory ball, the maker should know a lot of uh, kind of geometric principles. And also have the uh, ivory balls from the West. They have. Uh, this kind of uh, structure, well, they paid attention to the basic geometry. Uh, it's different uh, from the Chinese uh, ivory bowl. They used uh, complicated uh, techniques. So today, I'd like to focus on the carpentry and the basic geometry of ancient uh, buildings. For example, in the octagon, hexagon, pentagon, and other angles. And uh, in terms of the carpentry work, those uh, principles well, grasped the geometric system. Or the carpenters uh, were quite wise, and they can adjust their techniques uh, in the uh, acceptable deviation. If we did not know how they did those kind of uh, calculation, otherwise we'll be lost in the complicated data or in the specific uh, kind of uh, dimensions uh, calculations. And for this uh, codex, we found it in the National Library. The ancient uh, carpenters uh, passed it on uh, from the fathers to the sons. They have uh, those kind of uh, uh, different uh, principles uh, of the basic uh, geometry. And also, from the triangle to the 16th angles, uh, octagon, and etc., they are all covered in it. And uh, we also have uh, some uh, principles on the octagon. First one, in the Song Dynasty, we have this. Uh, a perfect octagon is formed with a thickness of uh, 60, a side of 25, and a diameter of 65. So I'm not going into details. So I might share with you a specific case uh, later on. So it's in simple languages, it's it just uh, Explained this uh, octagon, sixty twenty-five and uh, sixty-five. So it is uh, those kind of uh, uh, calculations. Now, how about uh, the other simple principles passed on from generation to generation? The first uh, verse, and then the other. Verses and uh, how this uh, oct octagon can have a square in it. I have different uh, verses to explain the principles. So we also have uh, those are quite uh, complicated ratios between the octagon and uh, inscribed square. And now let's look at the specific cases. In China, this is a quite a typical pavilion. In Songshan, we have this uh, 
steel pavilion. The first impression is that uh, the carpenters would encounter some problems. That is, for example, so for the uh, distance between the two columns, and if it is a whole number, and then for uh, this. Uh, Interior two columns, the distance might not be a, a whole n a number. So they use the, this kind of uh, relationship uh, that is uh, 13, 12, and 5, so that uh, they can try to unite all of it into this uh, system and a mechanism. If you're interested in it, you can do some homework and uh, do some calculation. And uh, also, in the same place, we also have this Hua uh, Zhong Yu wonder in picture area. This is uh, the uh, architecture of this wonder in picture. It uh, want to have a very good uh, effect. They also used uh, some verses. And what is uh, more interesting, in some wooden structure, they have uh, those kind of different uh, layers and uh, structures. Today, for the uh, octagon, we have uh, the uh, steel pavilion in Pingwu, Sichuan province. They have also the uh, octagon um, in that. For this octagon, They have this uh, um, angle, acute angle, to this uh, side, and it also has some uh, structural adjustments. If they want to fo uh, form such kind of uh, structure, so in terms of the design, it's also quite uh, complicated. They made some adjustment. Just suppose between the two uh, columns, it is a whole number. And then how about uh, the length of the octagon? It should not be the whole number. So how can they cope with this uh, problem? So they all use the, the verse that I mentioned, 12, 13, and 5. They have such kind of uh, relationship. So the carpenters uh, defined uh, this uh, distance uh, to be 12. And with half, it is uh, 6 inches. So it's a kind of 6.5 uh, inches, and then we got uh, 13 inches, and then that will be 5 inches. So with this uh, simple versus, and with the allowed uh, uh, deviation within the commercial work, uh, they found the solution so that uh, we can understand how the carpenters designed the structure, and we can further understand the designing for the other details. Um, so the geometric modeling. So I will not talk about the uh, Western cases. In ancient Rome, they also used uh, this kind of uh, mechanism. They called uh, this uh, separate cut. And then let's talk about the hexagon. So we also have such kind of verses and. Uh, many repetition of such kind of verses. So the ancient carpenters paid attention to the different relations of the diameter and the circumsphere. And uh, they also have uh, those kind of uh, geometric model in the ancient Rome. And also the um, imperial forest in Rome. I have two studies. We have uh, this uh, imperial ancestral temple in Beijing. That's what we call the labor people temple. It has this uh, water well pavilion. That is a pavilion over this uh, water uh, well. Uh, hex hexagon. And another architecture. We also have this uh, pavilion. <coughs> and if we see the two of them, uh, if we compare the two of them for that uh, 
temple um, of agriculture and also imperial ancestral temple. So for the arcs, if they will not uh, exist in a balanced uh, manner. So for this particular temple of agriculture case, I can, there isn't any arcs to follow. So we can see that because the con concentration of these two structures, so there's a converging period here. So this architecture undoubtedly brought a lot of challenge to carpenters, which is look, which call for the sophistication complexity for the separation of three. You can see they converge together here while they dispersed from each other to the previous pr picture. So in this uh, type of architecture, they use a more pure ideal geometry, which is a big challenge for Carpenter. While in contrast, uh, for the temple, uh, imperial ancestral temple, they use a compromise. So for these two pavilions, my, I go my voting to this one, to this temple agriculture. Uh, throughout the measurement, you can know more accurate and precise uh, findings. For instance, for these two arcs, the convergence of the two, they converge two together, but not with that one. This, for the hideout, for the uh, uh, unclear compromise, they made a certain adjustment. Uh, because it's too complicated, just past the, the details. The Pentagon, Pentagon, sometimes, it's, it's really a riddle, it's really difficult. You can see that's a script of the Qing Dynasty. The script, uh, so since the mathematics was uh, transferred to China from ancient uh, Western countries, we have the different verses. You can see here, they recorded in Yang Shilei Codex of the 17th century. Uh, this is a radical root 5, is approximately to 2.25. This is uh, the Jade Couch Pavilion in Qianlong Garden. This is uh, the uh, Jade Couch Garden. And uh, also in certain script, in certain literature, you can see the record, the record of this uh, Pentagon and the plum blossoms. This is uh, plum, plum blossoms. In the Tujia ethnic groups, I found uh, something similar. This is uh, the stool and desk of a pentagon. And they uh, a set of one table with several stools, which means that uh, Chinese, Asian Chinese people have a particular, peculiar, specific uh, focus and interpretation to a uh, pentagon. We can see the pentagon stool. This is the one in Hudan province. There's the Western Pentagon, pentagon buildings and the geometry behind. This is Gualino Gualini, who is an architect and a mathematician. He used a dome here in the outcome of our geometry. Actually, the interpretation can be dating back to Peter Rokas, then Peter Goras, then Salio, which is in Renaissance period, who is an architect. This uh, is a uh, Sebastian Serio. This pentagon figure that is uh, of five size cannot be formed quite as easily as the others because it is uh, composed of size of an odd number greater than three. Nevertheless, the way to draw it using theory is this. Having drawn a perfect circle, draw across inside it. That is a horizontal line, which is the diameter. With a vertical line falling upon the diameter, then on the right hand side, divide the half diameter into two so in sixty degrees, another is a golden divide. Golden divide. That is uh, one, one plus one, one to one is one to one to plus one. This is the golden divide. Anyway, we use three hundred, three sixty, one tenth of three sixty degrees. It's not for the common people, rather it's for the mathematicians. You have to know your angle for each every day because for the 360 days, you have three different angles. For this 360 system, you can get uh, 
this kind of multiplier correlation. With this correlation, you can have the golden divide to make a further calculation, which was unprecedented in China. Later when in Tang Dynasty, we transferred the mathematics from uh, European countries to China. Then we have the better understanding of it. For Duhan, we have the Pentagon, and we have more Pentagons. So where are they from? I'll tell you an anecdote. For this anecdote, my master was uh, the old Beijing person, the, and uh, the they want to. They will have to paint the walls for to celebrate the Chinese New Year for every year, and uh, they want to make uh, the article. Uh, what what kind of uh, picture should be there? For pentagon or octagon or octagon or hexagon? They believe that uh, the hexagon is hard, while well, pentagon is uh, the simple, simplest one in the world. After cutting, they made a knot. They made a knot. Like this one, this is a perfect pentagon. This uh, knot is for the girls when they are drawing, when they are the the lucky stars. It was uh, from the ancient Chinese uh, attic, uh, uh, craftsman. Beyond that, we have more cases. Due to time limit, I may not share each and every of them to you. You have time. You still have time. Okay. Thank you. Five minutes. Great. I share with you, Mr. Liang Shi, Liang Shicheng, who is the founder of our our institute. He paid a visit to Fu Guang Temple. In this temple, this palace, there was a wood structure. There was uh, sculptures, very simple structures. When the Japanese uh, visitors came here. After the measurement of Mr. Liang Shishu, who is the founder of our school of architecture, he made a, you can see the different, uh, you, you can see the, the down coming in. They believe that this is a, there was something interesting there. There is a certain traces. So after uh, the afterglow, the afterlight. So after the afterlight, they see something there, and they use the map. They use certain cloths to clean this one. You can see some picture here, and also they see some script here, even the Lord, the Lord, the donor, the donors are from our, from Xian, who is a lady. At the sight of this uh, script character, Mr. Liang heaved a uh, uh, relief. You can see this one. This is the picture of Ning Gong. You can see it was uh, the 857 AD. From this down, we see. And uh, also, another description for the donor, uh, donors com coming from Fujian province. This is from Xi'an Xi city. They are there from Fujian province. This is uh, our marshal, a general back then. And also there is a eunuch. So you can see, we have the generals of the eunuchs, we have the donors, so it's a really complicated, complicated story. So the design can be dating back to the classical methods back then. So according to interpretation from Mr. Master Liang, he, he has certain findings. For me, I made a recalculation. So 17 inches, 17. And also deviation, you can see the angle based on the 3D scanning and the statistics analysis. We made the measurement to all the different arcs. Through 3D, we have this uh, uh, regression of the statistics. So all those are, we can see the structure. You can see the, the correlation between the two. On the one hand, you can see the pitch, and then you have the whole architecture. You can see something mysterious. The mysterious pitch here. This is a two tri two triangle. 
if we increase it to by 11 folds, deducted by two small triangular triangles, you can see something more intrinsic. The, the, the 0.1 per each, that means 14.8 inch for each. That's why we measure is 1.5, but not 1.48. So that's the uh, precise calculation. So why the pitch is measured 47 to 21? So 47, how much is 70, 47 divided by 21? That is 2.238, and this is a radical root of 5. Radical root of 5. So this is something really interesting and awakening. We have the, so you have the 5 radical sign. We have the similar one in the buildings of Tang Dynasty and the Yuan Liao Dynasty. Whether that's the representative interpretation of the architecture, we don't know. But anyway, that's something thought provoking. Thank you. Time. Time. We have time, but I don't have more PPTs. Very interesting. In the eyes of an architect, we see another world. What we can see on a daily basis is only the buildings, and the exterior and interior, but we don't know the rest. Any questions from Mr. Liu after his presentation? Please ask uh, the, please use the uh, speaker, the microphone. We cannot hear you clearly because our, uh, use the microphone, please. My question is that uh, 865, we see certain numbers in whether you have certain cultural connotation to those numbers. Great, you have this question related to culture. I have an interest here. Hopefully, I can solve your question. Uh, give me 10 years, unfortunately, please. Why? I'm uh, convinced that uh, now I, I cannot solve the issue of uh, 5, 6, 8. I don't ha have the authority to give you the answers because I don't know whether it's a radical sign 5, for instance. Uh, like a number or whatever, maybe the piece of palace, the highest uh, is uh, 7.459. It's a very weird, weird number. But what does that mean? It's for the cultural meaning, or that's the uh, craftsman's uh, proportion. Conclusion. This is a maze. It's a riddle for me. I cannot make sure it's a seven five or nine eight. I cannot say for sure there's a cultural connotation. First, I try to interpret. Oh, I use the word I try to measure, not interpret, because without an accurate measurement, I'm not in the capacity to make uh, this uh, prediction and interpretation. Thank you.